hello guys this is code in code and this is another video lecture for uh, sorry this is i guess the first lecture for strongly connected component and in this lecture we are going to study about the kosaraju's algorithm for strongly connected component so before we start we must know what is we are going to study about so we are going to study about strongly connected component and what are those strongly connected components are subset c of vertices such that for any two vertices in the set C, there exists a path between them in the original given graph. So C is the subset of the subset subset of original uh, vertex set of the graph, and C is such that every for every two node in set C, there exists a path from V to U and from U to V. Now I will show you example here you can see for this directed graph there are three strongly connected component and of course strongly connected component is defined for directed graph for undirected graph it is simply connected component there is no strong notion of strongly connected component now here here you can see there are three strongly connected component this these three vertices con consist of a single connected component this forms a single connected component these four vertices form a single connected component so in total there are three connected component now here if you see if you choose any two node out of these two there exists a path from one to another and another to the previous one basically we choose these two nodes there is a path from one to three as you can see this is direct and also there is a path from three to one and there it is so any two nodes you, cho uh, you choose from a subset or from a, a strongly connected component then there is a path between them this is called strongly connected component and the problem is to find how you are given a directed graph how you would find and report how many strongly connected components are there or even in some cases you might be uh, you might be asked to print, print each connected component the vertices of each connected component for example for first i'll be printing the list of these three nodes to indicate these three form a single connected component then the second list would be this the third list would be this so this is the problem that we are considering in this lecture now a uh, strongly connected component and the transposed graph now you might already know what is a transposed graph so assume this is the original given graph given directed graph and the transposed graph is simply uh, the original graph where basically transposed graph is the graph where the vertex and edge uh, vertex set is the same only the edges are reversed so if in the original graph there was an edge from 2 to 1 then in the transposed graph the the edge would be from 1 to 2 this is simple concept right now you might have studied a little bit about kosa raju's algorithm which is used to find strongly connected component it uses two dfs's in the second dfs if you, if you pay attention it runs dfs on the transposed graph what is the reason for that you'll know in a moment when i'll be finishing this uh, lecture but first thing the most important thing why we uh, one of the reason why we run or dfs on the transposed graph is this see in the original graph this forms a single connect uh, connect uh, strongly connected component these three nodes this forms separate strongly connected component now these four form single strongly connected component so in total there are three strongly connected component in this graph now if we take a look on the transposed graph the strongly connected component does not change even in the strong transposed graph so uh, 1 2 3 were forming a single connected component in the original graph and so are uh, so they are forming in the transpose graph as well 1 2 3 are still in the same connected or uh, strongly connected component similarly 4 was forming a separate strongly connected component uh, in the transpose graph as well it is it is forming a separate scc now in the original graph these fours 5 6 7 and 8 were part of a same scc now even in the transpose graph they are part of the same ccc oh uh, sorry scc now this is one of the properties why we use transposed graph and the main reason you will know in a moment so the transposed graph has the same strongly connected component as the original graph so this was more of the story now the important thing about kosaraju's algorithm for proof to understand 
the Kosara juice algorithm in detail, you must know about the condensation graph because this helps us to, to prove why Kosara juice algorithm actually works. So, what is a condensation graph? A condensation graph is a graph made up of strongly connected component of the, a given graph. For example, here you see the blue dots represent the vertices and the black edges represent the edges of the original graph. So, blue vertices and black edges represent the original graph. Now, you see here these yellow circles these represent vertices of condensation graph and these yellow arrows represent edges of condensation graph so each strongly connected component of the original graph acts as a vertex in the condensation graph so these five nodes form a single strongly connected component or single scc that is why in the condensation graph these are forming a single verte uh, vertex Similarly, for this SCC, this SCC, this, this is so in the original graph, there are six SCCs and that is why there are six vertices in the condensation graph. Now, uh, the edges, how the edges are defined in the condens condensation graph is that uh, there is an edge from SCC CI to uh, SCC CJ, basically. Uh, assume let's take an example of these two so there is an edge from one connected component uh, one strongly connected component to other strongly connected component if and only if there exists a node v in ci and u in cj and there is an edge from v to u so basically in the condensation graph there is an edge from uh, an scc i to scc j if and only if in the scc i there is a node u or sorry v and in the jth scc there is a node v uh, u i guess yes u and there is an edge from v to u since here from this is strongly connected component there are two edges going out from this to this that is why in the condensation graph there is an edge from this scc towards this scc uh, similarly why in the scc there is an edge from this scc to this scc because in this scc there is a vertex, uh, a vertex from which there is an outgoing edge towards this strongly connected component so now you got the idea what are the edges and the vertices in the condensation graph now you might think how this can help us believe me this is one of the most important thing to understand before going to prove kosaraju's algorithm why that works and what is the building block of kosaraju's algorithm this is the building block block of kosaraju's algorithm now that we know that what is a condensation graph now there is an important property of condensation graph that is condensation graph does not contain any cycle in it you can simply prove it now see uh, to prove it what you can do assume that there is actually a cycle so in the condensation graph remember Suppose in, in, in the condensation graph, there is a cycle. We are saying, we are claiming that in the condensation graph, there does not contain any cycle. Uh, the condensation graph does not contain any cycle. This is what is our claim. Now, to prove that, you can simply uh, prove it using uh, contradiction. So, assume that there is a cycle. Let's say there is, an, uh, there is a cycle between these four. If there was a cycle, then these four would form a single strongly connected component, not multiple strongly connected component. Why is that so? See, if it forms a, uh, a cycle, then that means that it, there is an edge from this SEC to this SEC and this to this, this to this, this to this. That means from any node in this SEC, you can reach any node to this SEC using this edge, which was there from this SEC to this SEC. Similarly, from any node of this SEC, you can reach any node of this SEC. How? You can simply follow the path of the cycle, right? That would mean that these two are in the same strongly connected component because from any node of this SEC, you can reach any node of this SEC or from any node of this SEC, you can reach any node of this SEC, which basically says that there is a path from every node of this SEC to this. And similarly for this, that indicates that these two must not be, uh, these two should be a single connected component, single strongly connected component. But this contradicts the fact that these two are actually two different strongly connected components and hence the assumption that we made that there exists a cycle is wrong. You can try and prove it if you haven't understand what I have said but you can also google I think you uh, I'm in fact sure that you will find one or two link on the stack overflow proving that condensation graph does not contain any cycle. So 
condensation graph does not contain any cycle now the question is how this information is helpful to us well this is one of the most important and the helpful information you will know in a moment so first of all for the graph now if there are two strongly connected component ci and cj and there exists a uh, nh from ci to cj then out time of ci would be greater than the out time of cj now what is out time uh, we have in the graph theory part one we have already discussed in time and out time using dfs so here you see the upper number basically the numerator represents the in time and the denominator represents the out time now here you see this forms a single strongly connected component and this forms a single strongly connected component now out uh, as you might remember in time and out time is defined for a vertex it is not defined for a connected component or for a strongly connected component in this matter but we are saying that the out time of this is strongly connected component right but we have already seen that in and out time are defined for vertex not for the scc so we need to define them so uh, what is out time out time is the time when you leave a vertex from dfs call right when you enter a node for dfs call that is your in time and when you leave that node out uh, and your dfs basically ex uh, completes the execution and you leave that node that time is known as the uh, exit time or out time so out time of scc would be of course the maximum of all of the out time of the nodes which comprise of that scc so this scc is made up of one two and three vertices so maximum of i out time of all of these three is six it is having four it is having five it is having six so of course maximum of six so out time of this connected uh, scc is actually six out time of this scc is 12 right so what the claim is is that the lemma is that if there are two strongly connected components which are connected and there exist connected means there exists an edge uh, so if there exists an edge from scc ci to scc cj then out time of ci would be greater than the out time of cj this is the claim if there is an edge from a to b then out time of a would be greater and out time of b would be smaller this is the claim now what is the proof well just a second let me see whether i have no yeah yeah so i need to give you an example uh, example is this see so suppose you made a dfs call to any of the node in this scc right so see this is scc suppose this is a and this is b there is an edge from b to a so of course sc uh, the out time of b would be greater than an out uh, out time of b would be greater than out time of a this is the claim now why is that so see there has there is two condition first either you make a dfs call to scc b I think I have called this B, right? So either it is possible that you first made a DFS call to B and then uh, if you made a DFS call to B, B and A, it is possible that B and A both will get uh, visited by that DFS call or the other condition is that you first made a DFS call to any of the node of SCC A. So, so let's explore both of the condition and prove that in both of the condition no matter whether you make a dfs call first to uh, first in scc b and then to scc a or when you uh, you make a dfs call first to a and then to b it doesn't matter in both the condition since there is an edge from b to a so uh, out time of b would be greater than out time of a now let's see let's see let's go with the first condition where i have made dfs call first to any node in the scc b now if you make a dfs call to any node in scc b all of the node will get visited because this forms a single scc and whenever you make a dfs call to any node in a single uh, in a scc then whole uh, scc gets visited so when you suppose you made a dfs call to this so from here you can reach here and then from here you can reach here now you try to make uh, you try to make a recursive call to here but this is already visited so you would go here and then you would go here and here now you try to make a dfs call to this node but this is already visited so what would happen you would leave so this uh the first node we are leaving is this so this would have the least out time among all of these six nodes because we are leaving this node first and then this and then this and out of leave uh, after leaving all of the nodes 
will come here and then leave this node so you are seeing all of these the execution of all of these nodes have been completed then we are starting to leave each node of sccb clearly these node have been uh, have been exit uh, i mean the dfs call from these node have been already exited then we are exiting from these particular nodes so we have left this node earlier before we are leaving this node so of course the out time of this node would be greater than the out time of this and hence uh, out time of this sec is greater than out time of this so this is the condition where we make dfs call first to sec b now there is another condition in which we first make dfs call to this sec now since there is no edge from this sec to this sec when you would when you would make a dfs call to this sec all of these node will get visited and none of these node will get visited so once these node have been visited and when you make a dfs call to this any of the node in this sec because once you make a dfs call to this sec any node of this sec whole sec will gets visited and you will return to main function from where you have made a dfs call to the any node in this sec and then after completing this you would make another dfs call now to this sec you try to make a dfs call to 2 but 2 is already visited you already remember how sec works right uh, from main function we run a loop from 1 to n and whoever is not visited we make a dfs call to that first we made a dfs call to 1 1 makes 2 and 3 also visited now we return back to main and then we try, we see whether 2 is visited or not yes 2 is visited visited and then we see for 3 3 is all already visited now we see for 4 4 is not visited so we'd make a dfs call to 4 so now what is happening all of these nodes have already been ex uh, we have already uh, exited i do not know whether that is a correct term exited or not we have already completed the execution of dfs here so the out time of all of these nodes have already been defined now after that we are making dfs call to this so of course the out time of these node would be greater than them so in both of the condition the out time of that strongly connected component which if there is an edge from a to b then out time of if there is an a uh, an edge from a to b then what would happen the out time of a would be greater than the out time of b all of the pieces of information that till now i have given I have sem uh, summarized them here and the all of these are building blocks of Kosa Raju's algorithm one of the most important in fact these all are the most important thing to understand Kosa Raju's algorithm the working of it and to prove why that is correct first we have seen that okay the original graph and the transposed graph have the same strongly connected components second we have learned about the condensation graph third we have looked at the property and we have proven that the condensation graph are actually acyclic and basically they do not contain any cycle fourth we have seen that if there is an edge from ci to cj then out time of ci would be greater than the out time of cj these are what we have learned till now now one important thing see in a DAG that is directed acyclic graph there will be at least one node which is having degree zero so if you are having a DAG that is directed acyclic graph graph like condensation graph if you are having a condensation graph or any DAG then there would be at least one node with in degree zero now what is the proof of it i'm not going to prove that uh, i'll be pu putting the link of the proof from stack overflow this is one of the proofs where we have uh, someone have asked how to prove that if you are having a deck then, then there exists at least one node with in degree zero and as you can see this is an accepted solution and this is a pretty for, uh, straightforward uh, proof by contradiction so you, i'll be putting the link of that into the description so you can actually go there and see why and you can look at the proof it is easy to understand very very easy to understand you can go there and read the proof for for this claim that a DAG has at least one node with in degree zero now this is very important condition and i'm going to show you why why do i have this yeah one important see if when i'm making a dfs call to any node you already know if you make a dfs call to any node all of the nodes which lie in the same strongly connected component as that node 
to which you have made DFS call, all of those will get visited. Basically, these three form a single connected component, single SCC. So if you, no matter whether you make a DFS call to five or six or seven, all of these three will get visited. That is uh, because all of them are reachable from each other because they lie in the same SCC. So of course, when you make a DFS call to even a single node of SCC, the whole SCC gets visited because of the nature of, uh, because of the recursive nature of DFS. Now, wouldn't this be a helpful situation if you make a DFS call to certain SCC and only and only those nodes, those nodes which lie in that SCC, only those gets visited. Wouldn't that be helpful? Let me tell you what. If I make DFS call to five, I want only five, six and seven to get visited. If that happens, what I can do, I can make a list and count the total number of SCC. From main function, I made a DFS call to five and then uh, I made a list. I went to five, I inserted five into, into the list. Then I went, I made a recursive call to six. Then I also inserted six into the list. And then, then I went to seven. I also inserted seven into the list. And then I can go to four. But what I am saying, try to understand, I want to do something that only those nodes get visited. When I make a DFS call to certain node, only those nodes get visited, which lie in the same SEC as that node. So if I'm making DFS call to five, I want only five, six and seven to visit it. But the problem here is that when you make a DFS call to five, five, six, seven will get visited as well as four and three, because there is a path from four to uh, seven to four. So recursively, seven would make a DFS call to four and four would make a DFS call to three, three would make a DFS call to one and two and the whole graph gets visited. But I do not want that condition. I want only those nodes to get visited who lie in the same connected component. So I want the DFS to stop after reaching seven. Somehow when I make DFS call to any node in this SCC, only these three nodes get visited. If that can happen, then we can count. We can, in fact, make a list of all the SCC and we can count the total number of strongly connected components, right? Now, that is where this information comes into the picture. There is a node which is having, I mean, not a node. There is, a, now I'm talking about DAG. And what is DAG? DAG is actually, uh, what do we say? Condensation graph. Condensation graph is actually DAG, director is a cyclic graph. If condensation graph is DAG, then what would happen? There would be at least one node in condensation graph which would have in degree zero, right? There is, yeah, there is no edge which comes towards it. So if you make a uh, condensation graph out of this, this would make a single, single vertex from which there would be an edge to this and from it there would be an edge to this. So this would form a vertex, this would form a vertex, this would form a vertex in the condensation graph and there would be an edge from this to this and this to this, right? So you can see in degree of this SCC is zero because in degree of this is not zero, there is an edge from this to this. In, de in degree of this is not zero because there is an edge from this to this, from this SCC to this SCC. So I'm talking about condensation graph for this. Just imagine the condensation graph. If not, just use your pen and paper and try to make a condensation graph would be very easy because this is only three node condensation graph. It is basically a bamboo. Now you see this node and this node of, of condensation graph are not having in degree zero, but this is having in degree zero. If this SCC is having in degree zero, that means, that means there is no edge coming towards them. There, is, there are only edges which are going outside of this strongly connected component. What would happen if I talk about the same strongly connected component, but in the transposed graph? What would happen since in this strongly connected, uh, sorry, in this original graph, the in degree of this is zero, then in the transposed graph, out degree of this would be zero. Because in the transposed graph, in degree converts to out degree, out degree converts to in degree. Now, since this is strongly connected component is having zero in degree, that means in the transpose graph, this strongly connected component with will have zero out degree. And do you understand the importance of zero out degree? The importance of, of zero out degree is that when you make a DFS call to any of this node, this the DFS is not going to leave this strongly connected component. That is the importance of having zero out degree. You see, when you make a DFS call to even five, five would make a DFS call to one, one would make 
sorry it is 7 5 would make a recursive equal to 7 7 would make a recursive equal to 6 and that is it you are not going outside the strongly connected component see this is the power of zero in degree and this is the idea of kosa raju's algorithm so what would happen first we will see in the original graph which is strongly connected component is having zero in degree zero in degree will exist because we have proof of it that dag since we are talking about the condensation graph which is a dag of the original graph and since this is a dag there would be at least one node basically one strongly connected component which would have in degree zero if in degree of that strongly connected component is zero then in the condensation graph sorry then in the transposed graph that is strongly connected component will have out degree zero if that strongly connected component is having out degree zero that means when you make a dfs call to any node of that strongly connected component the dfs call is not going outside that strongly connected component and you are able to visit only those nodes which lie in that strongly connected component and that is important so i would make a dfs call to either 5 or 6 or 7 the whole strongly connected component will get visited and i have a list of 5 6 and 7 and i know there exists a strongly connected component which comprises of 5 6 and 7 now i would remove all of this node from the original graph now i would again find a node which is having in degree zero in the original so i would i have removed this strongly connected after finding out that these three form a single, single strongly connected component now i would remove these three along with all of the edges from the original graph now this is having zero in degree after removing this is strongly connected component now since this strongly connected component is having zero in degree in the transpose this would have out zero out degree i would make a dfs call and the list would contain only by four so i have two list of strongly connected component two list of different strongly connected component one comprises of five six and seven another comprises of four so now i know there are two strongly connected component till now i would also remove four now there is only one edge and it is having zero in degree so of course in the transpose graph it would have zero out degree i would make a dfs call and all these three nodes will get visited and i will have a third list with myself with the notes one two three now i know there are three lists so there are three strongly connected component if someone asks me to print each list i can do that too so see all of these that we have studied there is a condensation graph there is dag with zero in degree and so on all of the things that we have learned have led us to a solution to an algorithm which actually gives us information about the strongly connected component and this is the building block of kosa raju's algorithm this is kosa raju's algorithm now why we use two different dfs i'll be telling you in the next lecture because this lecture is already going too far i mean it is too lengthy i, I believe so in the next lecture i'll be explaining why we need two dfs in fact how you would de determine okay uh, this strongly connected component is having zero in degree how you are going to decide that because all you have is a data structure all of the edges are saved inside the whole graph is saved as uh, adjacency list how you are going to decide which strongly connected component is having zero in degree how you are going to do uh, how you are going to do that of course that is a problem so kosara juice uses two dfs first to determine the order in which we need to run dfs in this transpose graph so that each time when you make a dfs call a success a successful dfs call it it tells you a single strongly connected component first it would create first dfs would create an order of the nodes in which we should make dfs call into the transpose graph and the second is of course making actual uh, dfs calls in the transpose graph and finding the strongly connected component i hope this lecture was helpful and of course it uh, i'm assuming that this have given you enough information that you can even try to understand kosaraju's algorithm by yourself if you even read from certain sources so i hope this was helpful if this was helpful please let me know in the comment section so uh, this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching and, and in the next lecture i'm going to ex explain both uh, basically i'm going to show you how kosaraju's algorithm is implemented so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching and until the next video drops keep coding thank you